Our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 11. What an exciting time this was in the history of our church. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to, be, to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to those men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood before them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And then now let us pray for Pastor Ishmael as he delivers your word. Let us be inspired by all that he has to say this morning. God be his guide. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day. This has been another week that I had love, rough, rough time. As we are talking about mothers today, I am mourning my sister who was also a mother. She was a mother of two and a grandma of one. On Wednesday morning, I was woken up by the sad news that she has passed away. She has been unwell for some time. We have been praying for her, but she couldn't make it. And uh, as I am thinking about mothers, I am thinking about her children. One of her children, the son, who is the oldest, called me and asking me, calling me and asking me and crying all over and saying, my mother is no more. How will me, my life be without my mother? And I am looking at who is the mother. And today, though today is the Ascension Sunday, and we are talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit and how Jesus promised his disciples of the Holy Spirit. It's a, a good day too to remember that today is as Mother's Day. To look unto the Bible a bit and see what does the Bible say about mothers. Honoring mothers. The Bible in the book of Proverbs that one twenty eight twenty nine says, our children rise up and call our blessed. Her husband also, 
and he praises her. Many women have done exactly, excellently, but you surpass them all. The Bible and the word of God recognizes the mother. You know, when a man marries and the wife becomes a mother, the title changes. It is only a mother who can make a title of a man to change. He changes from Ishmael to dad. You know? And he becomes proud. A man, men, we are proud and we say, this is my son, this is my daughter. And we praise their mothers and praise and say that, oh, I am now a father. I have a son. I have a daughter. In the Proverbs that one and that one, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. You know when the mother is in the house, it's not like when the father is alone with the children. When the mother comes in, she lights up the life in the house. Everybody will feel that mother is in the house. And they are confident that the, the children, the husband, and anyone else who is there feels confident that the mother is around. The mother is in the house. Many a times I do tell you that I don't really know the love of the mother, but I have, I know the love of a grandma. And that's why I thought in, in the sighting that I cited this morning, which so ran to us in the bullet from bulletin, that even grandmothers are mothers. And I, I thought if I didn't have a grandmother, who would I Call mother. When the mother comes, there are praises. Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. It is a day to remember our mothers and honor them. That they give life to us. And that the Bible is telling us and reminding us when we honor our parents, we will have long life. Those who are parents. You may not have your mother or your father, but they are parents. We have other parents. We are here in Lake Hen with my family and we don't have our own relatives, sisters, brothers, but we have you. And we regard you as our family. We regard you as our mothers. We regard you as our dads and brothers and sisters. When you honor your mother, you are honoring God. For those of you who their mothers are still alive, keep Keep up the good work of taking care of them. Because when you are taking care of them, you are beckoning for blessings. What does the Bible say about what mothers can pass to their children? 
the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, 6 to 7. And these ones that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. This is the mother commanded by the word of God what to pass to the children. The word of God teach them, teaching them the word of God. I know it. Mothers are teachers. We say we speak mother tongues. We don't speak father tongues. Why? Because fathers are not the teachers. They don't teach their children the first ones. Papa, mama, come, daddy. That is the work of the mother. And so the Bible is very clear. For mothers, you have to be kind and you have to be careful of what kind of ones you are passing to your children. Those who are young mothers, but still we have grandmothers who are taking care of these children. Be careful, mothers, of what you are passing to your children. Mothers can pass a blessing to the children. Mothers can pass a curse to their children. When a mother says, you are beautiful to that uh, a girl, you are a handsome young man. They f it's not like when the father says, you are beautiful. When the mother says it, the child or the children feel it inside because they know for sure if the mother is saying, his mom is saying that, I have plenty. It's not like when the, the dad is speaking. The Bible is very clear that start in, in the book of Proverbs 22 verses 6. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. You hear, even the, 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 the grandmothers in the house, you hear them say, hey, mom used to say this. Mom used to do this. This is what mom wanted things to go. This is how she arranged her things. The, ma, my mom loved this color. My, my mom, because mothers are there. So, teaching your children. When you tell your child that Jesus is son of God and he died for us, it goes not only into that child's mind, but even to his or her own heart. Because she is being or he is being tell, tell, told this by one who loves him or her. And that's why the Bible is saying, teach them, start them. The very first day, start your children. Start children off on the way they should go. And they will never forget. We still, you are 60, you are 70, but still when I talk about mom and I talk about your mom, you still remember what she did to you, the discipline that she was giving you, the teachings that she, she taught you back when you were five, you were four, six, you can still remember. God's promise to mothers and their children. Just as God promised the disciples of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus knew they will not be able to make it without him. He also, God also have a promise to mothers and their children. 
What does the Bible say about the promise to the mothers? In the book of Psalm 139, 13, 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. The promise, God's promise to mothers. God knows and looks at the mothers with a kind eye, looks at the mothers in a loving way because you continue to procreate and he gave you that ability. And he is saying, you are wonderfully made and fearfully created. I imagine or try to imagine this world without mothers. There could be only one person. It could be only Handam if there were no mothers. The mothers are recognized not only by their children, but also by God. And God promises to bless them for who they are. Isaiah 66, 13. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And this now brings us to today's reading. That it takes time. Just as one whom his mother comforts, when the mother hugs you and tells you, I am sorry for what is happening. God is with you. I am praying for you. My prayers are with you. Just as the mother comforts our children. The same way we will be comforted. The same way the disciples were comforted. That I am not leaving you like orphans. But it is time for you to go remain in Jerusalem. Remain in Jerusalem and I will give you a gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is seen as a son and therefore seen as a father. But he is not only a father because the Bible is comparing Jesus with a mother. A mother is therefore a duty for the mother to comfort others. When you comfort others when they need comfort, when a mother goes and sits down with the children and prays with them and plays with them still, they feel that we are secure. We can be open. We can share. We have someone to tell our challenges. As Christians, as disciples of Christ, we have Jesus who comforts us. Even when things are tough and even when our fellow human beings are unable to comfort us, Jesus Christ is there. And Jesus Christ is there in form of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget a nursing child 
that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb. Even this may forget, yet I will not forget you. The ones of God to us. That well, God is saying it's not possible for a mother to forget about a nursing son. And even though she may forget, he is promising us that he will never, he will never forget us. Jesus talked to, to the disciples and he is telling them that I am not leaving you alone. But there is two things. One is to wait. Jesus is telling them, wait in Jerusalem. Wait. The time to wait, that time is not, it's a gift. Waiting is a gift. That patience. Wait. They don't know how long, but wait. God, my Father, will give you a gift of the Holy Spirit. Go to Jerusalem, wait. There is a time to wait, brothers and sisters. There is a time to wait. And if you want to wait, you have to wait until the promise comes. And then he continues and telling them, you go to Jerusalem, remain in Jerusalem, wait. And you will receive. And Jesus is giving them instructions. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus instructs the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit. For us the same wisdom holds. Obey the instructions of Jesus and wait for the Spirit running ahead of the Spirit or trying to do things in Jesus' kingdom without the Spirit is not a good idea. Don't think of doing your own things in the kingdom of God. God is, has called all of us to be in this house, to be in the vineyard, to continue with this mission. But I want to remind you today, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what Jesus is promising us, that wait for the Holy Spirit. Many a times is when we ask, even some Christians do ask, how would I know that the Spirit is speaking? You will know the Spirit is speaking if you are only listening to the voice of God and you are read by the Holy Spirit. When you are read by the Holy Spirit, you will always think of the things of God and you will always think of doing good to others. You will love others just as Jesus himself loved you. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. The promises that Jesus gives are good and Jesus desires to give you a good gift. Sometimes we have to be patient and wait for the gift. But don't stop seeking the gift. Trust Jesus. The wait will be worth it. Even if you are expecting it today and it doesn't happen, don't lose hope. Continue expecting the gift from God and it will happen. You will wait and then you will say, I have really waited, but it was worthy the wait. A mother waits for nine months with the challenges. Not just nine months, very comfortable months. No. She is throwing up here. She is falling there. She is sleepless today. She doesn't want to eat this full kind of food. She, she has 
so many experiences for those in those nine months. But that nine months, the way, the way for nine months is climaxed by the cry of a child within a minute. And she forgets about the nine months. She forgets the experiences that she had gone through and says, yeah, I am a mother. And that is it. And today, Jesus is reminding us, or God is reminding us, that uh, it is about being patient. Wait. Jesus would have called God at that particular time and say, God, my father, can you bring down the Holy Spirit? Boom. But he said, no. Wait. Go and wait. It's worthy the waiting. The Holy Spirit provides the power to witness. Seek the power of the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, gave the Holy Spirit. But then he gave them a mission. There's a promise and then a mission that you will not be able to witness about my deeds and my works that I have done while we were together. If you don't have a Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to help you witness, to help you continue with the mission that I started with you. The church needs the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish the mission of witnessing. We are all on the journey to Pentecost together. A journey from doubt to belief, from fear to faith, from failure to maturity, from human power to spirit power. Let's keep walking together as a church, as brothers and sisters. We need to work together. It is time to realize that the church needs this power of the Holy Spirit. The church that is not read by the Holy Spirit will fail. But if we are read by the Holy Spirit, we will stand together and we will continue with the mission of witnessing that Jesus is promising us. If the church is not witnessing about Jesus Christ and the life, the life of Jesus Christ, the love of God and the deeds of Jesus Christ, then just know that church is not led by the Holy Spirit. It is time for us to ask ourselves where we are as a church. Are we patient? Are we waiting? Are we on this journey to Pentecost together? Let us continue being patient. Jesus is about, God is about to speak and to give us gifts. And we will walk out there saying, I have been waiting and it is worthy waiting. I have been praying for this. It has just happened. But we need to wait. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.